After a disappointing result at the Sochi Olympics saw them fail to win a medal for the first time since 1964, the German men's bobsleigh squad have regrouped and reclaimed their place as an elite nation, culminating in a clean sweep of the medals in the four-man, with two of the teams tying for gold at this year's World Championships. We are about to conduct one of the most important tests of the year. The Olympic Games are next year, and we still want to produce new and improved bobsleighs. Today we're at the BMW wind tunnel, and in this environment it's all about the aerodynamics. We're comparing our current models with the new ones, which we think are better, and the evidence provided by the measurements back this up. So in the months ahead, the new aerodynamics will be built into the old sleighs in the hope that it will gain us an advantage. If we can gain even two or three hundredths per run in aerodynamics, then after four runs at the Olympics, that adds up to over a tenth of a second, and that's the difference between a gold medal and fourth place. We try to transfer the technology which we know from cars onto bobsledding. The reason we do the tests is simple enough. We're trying to make the bobs go faster. The way we do it is by placing a range of different bobsleds in the wind tunnel, measuring the resistance strengths, comparing them with one another, making quick changes and seeing whether it has a positive effect on object resistance. The construction of the bobsled is carried out by designer and builder Hannes Wallner, who travels and consults with the team regularly to ensure the bobsled is optimally designed and set up. It's a matter of considering every fraction of an inch, and I find that particularly interesting because every hundredth of a second is important, and if you begin with that parameter, then you can be sure that every hundredth is on your side. The most fascinating part for me is the aerodynamic values and their relationship within a sports team with larger and smaller athletes. Naturally, there's a lot at stake. When you consider everything as a whole package, it's uniquely interesting, and you really have to work very closely with the athletes just to reach a positive aerodynamic value. The tunnel generates wind speeds of up to 300 kilometers per hour, allowing the team of scientists and engineers to assess the effects of drag and resistance. The advantage of the wind tunnel is that you can create absolute reproducible airstream conditions, which are independent of weather conditions, such as rain, snow or ice. Obviously, we only test the bobsled's form, but this is then valid for all the tracks. Every ice channel behaves differently because it has unique curvatures and specifications. It ultimately makes the bobsled faster overall if its speed has been maximized in our wind tunnel. Since we started this process, we've changed a couple more things so I can fit into the driving seat more easily. I'm hoping I'll be very happy with it next year. I always have those kinds of problems because I'm a very big pilot. I tend to stick out of the bob quite a long way, so my head is always in the wind. It gives the boys behind me a little more room, and in the end, it's crucial that the weight is as deep as possible to keep the heavy part of the sleigh low. That has a positive effect on the bob's steering features. Big guys are always in the wind, and that leaves a bad drag with the aerodynamics. Because of this, we are still trying to optimally channel the wind alongside us by using the bob's geometry to our advantage. Without the tests run here at BMW, our team would be developing out of the blue without any real foundations. So what we receive is guaranteed information, but we still need to take more measurements for the next prototype. We'll also maybe need more changes in sitting positions with the teams to get the last drop of information. Seen from that perspective, this has been the first important meeting in planning for the season ahead and next year's Olympics.